with a fossil tree. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Today we have a special guest, uh, Pastor JJ. Yeah. Good morning. Well, it's really good to be back and to see some of the old faces that I used to see before and some of the new faces as well. Uh, it's great to see so with all uh, people and always encouraging, especially this church, whenever, every time I see Pastor John, it's encouraging because, uh, sorry to say about his age, but um, <laughs> you know, at that age, he's still serving and uh, serving with uh, such a young people. It's very encouraging because uh, I always feel like I'm getting old, uh, working with the uh, younger people, but have a hope that I'm still able to work with the younger people even at this age. Um, just briefly, let me tell you about the ministry that I have in Thailand. Uh, we are in Thailand and working with a children's ministry to start off. And then now it's growing up to be uh, high school and into the college and also post-college now. So it's continually growing because after being for 14, 14 years yeah, serving in Thailand. So God has been really good and are very faithful, and I believe every church will grow as God is you know, being there with us. I believe this church also continues to grow, not only physically, but I'm praying that with more in the inside or the spiritually, they will grow as well. So our main theme of our Jasper Kids is about discipleship. I talked with the Pastor Johan this morning about a discipleship, that your focus is a discipleship as well. And our Jasper Kids is also about a discipleship. Now we are growing up to be as a discipleship that our first generation Jasper Kids is ready, ready to take on our Jasper Kids ministry. So they are trained to be as, uh, as a biblical training and some of the older with the education in the master's program. And so I'm about the age, actually as a missionaries, our target age our target time period is about 10 years that we gotta start planning after 10 years is, we call it uh, pulling up program or pulling up plans. So after 10 years of serving and then we gotta start pulling out and then leave the ministry to the locals or to the natives. So we are into that stage where our first generation of the Jasper Kids is ready to take off our Jasper Kids ministry and I'm really pleased uh, to be uh, in that point and that's only because can be done because of the discipleship and then that's what I want to talk about today the true disciples so who is the true disciples you know um, a lot of times we we can just say disciples of Jesus Christ but sometimes we say oh you know this is true disciples my love is true love for you so when we keep on talking about the word the true in front of the words what does that indicate in our lives? Because there is non-true. There is a fake. There is a fake disciples or there is a fake love. That's why I say this is true love. What do you mean by true love? Because there is a fake love. That's why we keep on emphasizing in the, in the true, the word the true. So we want to emphasize as a true disciples as well. You know, in the disciples, um, you know, it has to be true, but what it look like, it look like it's, you know, real disciples, but it may not be a true disciples. 
because it simply look alike, meaning that you come to the church, it doesn't make you to be as a true disciples. It doesn't make you as a true Christians. Simply you read a scripture, you go to church on Sundays. You know, uh, for example, in Thailand, we have uh, so many uh, good stuff uh, selling it so cheap, okay? So I purchased uh, one of the item to take it uh, to show you, uh, to give an example. So I bought this uh, Rolex watch in Thailand, you know, very expensive Rolex watch. Never uh, owned a Rolex in my life before, so I had to invest it for this sermon, you know. So uh, probably some of you guys know how much Rolex watch was, how much it cost, but I never knew actually watches cost that much, you know. I, n I never knew it, you know. When I was in the States, maximum or, or the most expensive watch I ever purchased was Timex, about $25, $30. You know, those are it. I thought it runs about hundred dollars. I thought it was pretty expensive. Uh, but Rolex watches were like this particular model that I purchased. It's about thirty-five thousand U.S. dollars. Okay, and but praise God that gave God gave me a, such a special price, so I bought it for thirty dollars. Okay, you know, so it's a Rolex watch that it just looks like a Rolex watch. But it's not. So I just want to compare how real it was. So on the way here, you know, I stopped by the, the duty-free shop, you know, Incheon Airport. I was looking for this particular model. It really exists, or is this, is this something they just made it up? You know. So surprisingly, I w I was able to find the same model and same design in their showcase. That's why I, how I find that the price it was thirty-five thousand dollars. And then when I was comparing this fake watch in the shop, um, it, I, I, ca I cannot believe my eyes either because uh, even little words, little letters, and the designs, little logos, they put it on every little corners. Everything was the same, <laughs> you know, everything was the same. Even I never knew that Rolex watch, they don't use the batteries. I don't know, did you know? It shakes and then it runs. So this one does that too. <laughs> So it, it shakes and it doesn't use a battery. So even that, it's uh, identical. So even the how pushing the button, it can be, it look like, but it's the same. It's not turning, you gotta push the button to change the, you know, the, the date and stuff. So everything is like that. It's so real, but it is not real, you know? So that's what I wanted to emphasize to you, you know, why, why is it important to be a true disciple, not like Rolex watch that I'm wearing. You know, because I'm wearing it, it's a fake. If somebody is wearing it, probably they might believe it's real, you know. So because you come to the church, a lot of people might believe that you're true Christians, but sometimes may not be. So that's why I want to emphasize with you today. So I want to read a scripture with you on Book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 21 through 23. Okay. Book of Matthew, chapter 7. Verse 21 through 23. I'm just going to read it to you. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on, the de on that day, Lord, Lord, they will not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons, and in your name perform many miracles. And then I will tell you them plainly, I never knew you away from me, you evil doers. On the verse 21, first part, it says, Lord, Lord, whoever says, Lord, Lord, it doesn't mean that you will enter the kingdom of God. That's what it specifically says. Even though you do so many things, you do a lot of things in the church, even though you say the Lord, Lord, it doesn't mean you will enter the kingdom of God. Because you look like holy, you are not enter the kingdom of God. I'm sorry, but even though we as a pastors, because we graduate from the seminary and become a pastor or the leaders of the church, it does mean that we enter the kingdom of God. Because you're praise leaders, or you're worship leaders, or you're Sunday school teacher, or you do play the roles in the church, it's just simply that it doesn't mean that you're entering the kingdom of God because you've done the some service for the kingdom of God. You know, then 
you know, what they did in the verse 22 says, you know, Lord, I, I did a lot of things in your name. I drove out the demons in your name. I prophesy in your name. You know, I do a lot of miracles in your name. I done a lot of things in your names. And then it occurred and it did happen. So many things. But what is, what is it wrong with that? Actually, there's nothing is wrong with what they have done. And God never, you know, say something about, even in this scripture, God did not say anything about that what you have done is what is wrong. Then what is wrong with it? Then something is missing there. That was what's missing. That, that's what is wrong with it. That what is missing? Is that something that is missing is, is a reasoning and the purpose behind this person was performing. So that's what is missing. And that what we call it is a faith. We do everything in the faith. By faith, we got to do everything. But this person did not have a faith. And then they've done a lot of performance under God's name. But actually, it's for their own sake, not God's sake. So because of faith is missing, so through faith, we'll inherit the kingdom of God. And through faith, we'll be able to be saved. And it's, it's clear, you know, that we cannot enter the kingdom of God without a, a faith. And the only only the faith that we are able to enter the kingdom of God and then not the actions. So this kind of reminds me of the Apostle Paul and the James. You know, you know Paul, Apostle Paul emphasized on the faith, but James is emphasized on the action. So a lot of Christians, you know, focus on the actions a lot of times, kind of sadly sometimes, and that we miss out Apostle Paul as well. But also at the same time, on the, on the other hand, a lot of people say, you know, focus on the faith, but not the actions. Because my heart is important, not my what I do is important. You know, but for me, like, I believe that both of them are true. You need a faith, you need a actions. So both of them are uh, correct. And I believe the faith should come first, meaning that when you have a true faith, action just automatically will follow. But when you do the actions, I'm sorry, but your act of faith doesn't come. But what it comes after you do so much actions, you becomes tired, you becomes weary. And then you get tired of coming to the church and tired to do the discipleship training, tired to come to the you know, prayer meetings. You becomes tired because you keep on focusing on the actions because the faith doesn't grow. But the, when your faith grows, you come to the prayer meetings, you come to the discipleship, you continually have a joy, and more joys will come, it follows. But it doesn't come other ways. So that's why the faith is more, uh, in that sense, it's uh, important that you have to be focused on the faith and the, in the heart. Yeah, so another problem is not only the faith, but purpose and the reasoning behind it. Let me ask you why you come to the church. And then I have asked a similar question to my Jasper kids as well. You know, and I received the surprising answers. I asked them why you come, become a Christian. Why do you want to come to the church? So the purpose behind it is very important. And that was what's wrong with it a lot of times. And then I asked a simple question, says, for example, like, what if? You know, what if there's no rewards or the heaven awaiting for you after your death? Do you still come to the church? So ask yourselves as well, what if what Christ has done up to this point is the truth, but what is promising such as heaven and the rewards that is in the heaven? What if it is not there? Would you still choose to come and worship in God? And then would you still come to the church and you know, give all your life to serve with God. And our Jasper kids said, uh, their answer was very surprisingly, most of them says, yes, I will still come and worship God. Even there is no heaven, even there is no reward. I don't really need it. Because why? I already received so much more than anything else. What Christ has done on that cross is more than enough. I don't need anything else to serve for God serve with God. So I was really touched by that answer. You know, how many of you really make decisions like that in our lives? So, so maybe these people in these scriptures, when they were prophesizing, 
de take, uh, casting demons and doing a lot of things in the name of the Christ, probably they want to go to the kingdom of God. They want to receive a lot of rewards from God. They want to be their own fame. They want to be recognized by God and say, God, you have done such a good job as God is saying to you. Maybe that was the focus and the reasoning behind it. That's why um, that God says, you know, that I don't know you. Because their focus and the reason behind it was wrong. You know, there's a two kinds of believers in this world. There's a self-centered believers and God-centered believers. I hope you guys are all God-centered believers, you know. And uh, self-centered believers, are they live the life to gain or for the blessings. And the God-centered believers are live the life of the obedience. You know, apparently, you know, they were uh, self-centered, fake disciples of the Christ. But the most important part of the heart, you know, is not just what it looks like, but also we need to be really careful about it. Okay? For example, in Thailand, that, you know, mission is getting really hard. You know, I'm sure the churches here is also hard. You know, I talked about it. So many people come to the church because of what they want to gain about it what they want to receive about it. So they shop around for the church. Do you have a, such a good children's program? Or does your pastor speak well? Is there fun? Is it exciting? There's activities. And they're looking all that, but the important part is Christ that they're missing out. So in Thailand, also mission is getting really hard because now it's Buddhism, Islam, and communism are the left of the, as an unreached people group. And Thailand is one of them as a Buddhist nation. That we say it's not it's not about what we do, but it's about our heart is more important. So a lot of people are disguising themselves as uh, I'm not a Christian, but I'm a Buddhist, and that's how the reality is happening in the mission field. They don't want to say that I'm a Christian, but I want to say um, I am a Buddhist. And then you pray to God, you know, our God as a God of Jesus Christ, but you can say. Allah, it's okay. As long as your heart say you are saying Jesus Christ. And then because of the uh, you know, reality of the Islam nation, if you convert from the Islam to the Christian, you know, your penalty is a death. It's a publicly known by the law, you die. Not just a simply capital, you know, it, uh, the death, but it has to be done in the hung in the public is uh, their law. You know, so when I was in Pakistan, it was like that too. So that's why missionaries are having a hard time to ministering to them, to encouraging them to become a Christian. So you disguise yourself. It's important for the heart. So you go to a mosque, you go to a Buddhist temple, you know, you say Allah, you say Buddha, whatever you say, and then pray with them and do whatever you say it out loud. But it's just inside your heart, you pray to the to God and to Jesus Christ, and that's good enough. You know that's the reality that is happening in the mission field right now. So I don't think that is the right thing to do. You know that is totally not right. You know there's no way you can say that you know Allah and say this is Jesus Christ. It is not because you believe in Jesus Christ and you say faith within within Christ, and then you have to stand strong in the faith and the live the life, you know. And if you do not live like that, um, then you're not true disciples of Christ. And I don't believe, you know, just the inside is, you know, changing, but outside, apparently, it doesn't change, then uh, it's not true disciples either. So when the inside changes, outside definitely will change. You know, there's n you don't need to fear about it. You know, I was really surprised to hear that. And then a lot of people are going to the Buddhist temple and say we are opened up so many churches. And um, that's not the right way of the life. I know because it's difficult, that's why. So it's not only the heart is important, but also action is very important as well. So it doesn't really matter, you know. The bottom line is, even though however you live the life, and on this world, and then if the God says, as a verse 23, I never knew you, you know, get away from me, you evildoers. 
you know, how do you feel when you hear after coming to the church and serving in the church and when I died on the, and then I enter the kingdom of God and I see in the Christ, why in the front and say, Jesus Christ telling you, I don't know you, you evildoers, get away from me. If you hear that kind of answer from Christ, how do you feel? I'm sure you never feel really good about it. I'm sure you will be sad, you know, after all the things that you, what you have done. But the important thing is, you know, you know, we, you gotta, you know, we do not do uh, the things for God because we are not, we are not the serv- we are not the simple, uh, the same as a servant of God in this world. But we are truly a servant of God who, you know, who do not work for God. Okay, so you have done so much work uh, for God, and that you want to receive a lot of rewards from God. But I think that there's uh, something wrong with it. I call. I also at uh, one point that I said to God, God, I'm not going to work for you anymore. I'm not going to do the work for you, because that's not what God wanted uh, from me. You know, God never wanted uh, for us to work for God. Okay, because we are we are different than a servant in this world, when the masters tell you whatever, and then you serve for that person. You know, but it's a somewhat like that, that we, we just do the things what God is asking us to do only. We don't work for God, but we do what God is asking. And that's what the true disciple is. Okay? And the verse 21b, it says, then who is the true disciple? Second part of the verse 21 says, then who uh, it says, only the one who does the will of God will enter kingdom of God. Then who's the true disciples? True disciple is the uh, who does the will of God. Then have you ever prayed and asked God, you know, what is God's will for your life? What is God's li- will for my life? I'm sure and many of you guys ask that questions or maybe even, you know, asking even at this time as well. But did you know that if you ask the wrong questions, what kind of answer you will get? You will get the wrong answers, right? So I believe that question that, God, what is your will for my life? I believe that is wrong questions that we ask God. Because a lot of times that focuses on yourself. So a proper question is, God, what is your will? And that's it, you gotta start right there instead of saying, for my life. When you keep on saying, for my life, what, am, what do you have planned for me? What do you do? What do you have for me, for me? Honestly, God does not have anything for you, in a sense. God has already planned out everything, and then we are just in it. God's plan is already there, but we are part of it already. God does not have a separate plan just for Pastor Johan. No, God already had a plan, and then Johan is a part of it. So something like that, that's, the, that's why we need to ask the right questions. So what is God's will? And then we need to focus on God, not myself or my life. You know, once again, we gotta be not self-centered, but we gotta be God-centered, you know, God-focused. So when I realized this and I learned what is the best way of uh, learning the God's will is the life of the Jesus Christ, I think that is the best example. So let me read one more passage to you. It's in the book of John, chapter 5. Book of John, chapter, f- chapter 5, verse 17 and 19 through 20. And let me just read only the caption of the Jesus, uh, Christ's words only. It says, My Father is always at his work to this th- very day, and I am too uh, working. This is Christ is saying it. And verse 19 says, Very truly I tell you, the Son of the Son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his Father doing, because whatever the Father does, the Son also does. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all he does, yes, and he will show, show him even greater works than these, so that you will be amazed. And this is a word of Christ, he himself saying it. Here in this passage, then, who is work, who is always at work? It says, Father. You know, God the Father is always work where? Around us. So how much can the Son, Jesus Christ, do by himself? 
he himself says nothing. Christ, he himself says, I can do nothing if Father does not show him any work. Then what does the Son do? Is the only thing what Father does, the Son does also. And uh, why does Father show the Son what he do what he's doing? Because the Father loves him. Because the Father loves you so much that God will also show you, you know, what he's doing in your life. So that's what I say, it's God's plan. So God is actually working around your life even today, that's according to the scripture. Even today, God is continually working around your life. We cannot just seek for something else, but God is working around your life and God is initiating and calling you to join him. And that is God's will. So we are always looking for God, I am here, now what do you have for me? So that's why you're always getting frustrating and that you try to do something for the church and something for the pastor, something for God, and then eventually you get so weary and so tired. Pastor, can I just rest being a press leader for a while? And can I rest it another year or something? So because you get tired, because you try to do yourself, not what God is asking you to do. So I think, you know, here the key word that I never realized God's way of teaching is a show, is the, you know, the word, the show, was something that really touched my uh, way of the teaching as well. It says, it doesn't say the Father taught him, the Son, how to do it, but here it says, God the Father shows him what he does. Okay? So this is one of the huge mistakes that in my ministry when I was doing a children's ministry in the youth ministry when I was in the States over 10 years. A lot of times I get tired with the youth group as well, even though at the same time I receive a lot of challenges and exciting time. But, in, but what I made a mistake was I keep on telling them what to do or what not to do. So this is wrong, this is right. Do this and don't do this. That's what I've been teaching my youth kids all the time. So they get frustrated you know, with me. So when they have a problem, you know, I tell them, did you do your devotions every morning? Do you read your Bibles every morning? You know, all that uh, kind of boring uh, things. You know. And then they, when they say no, then my answer is, yeah, that's why. That's why you have a problem in your life, because you did not read your scripture. Did you pray every morning? You didn't pray. That's why, you know. So I, keep, I have a lot of reasonings, and that's what I tell them, discouraging them, in, in a sense. Keep on discouraging them by using the scriptures, by telling them what to do and what not to do. But what I made a mistake was I never showed them how to live as a Christian life. So that's what I changed, you know, in the, in the life uh, ministry in Thailand. So I decided to do the showing them ministry. Because in order to show them how to live is to build up the relationship. And that's what I say with the Pastor John a lot is he spent a lot of time with the church and the members, discipleship. And the Pastor Johan as well. So I see some of the pictures in the Facebook and that's what I encouraged a lot. So I decided to do the similar things, spend a lot of time build up the relationship with our Jasper kids. It is not about, you know, telling them, according to open up the scripture and say, pointing here, 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 that's where your life is all messed up, messed up, messed up. You do this, do this, do this. I don't do that anymore. So I'm encouraging them. And then through the scripture, let's try doing this way. So let's do it together. So growing up together. And, and then I see like even Jesus Christ with the, his 12 disciples, you know, then I realized, I never realized, that, even though I read it so many times, but he went together, all kinds of adventures together, slept together, finding together, fellowship, eating together, all kinds of things. You know, he was doing the, all the building of the relationships. You know, it doesn't say that Jesus Christ, you know, keep on telling them, don't do this and don't do that. And then he's sitting in the church and let the disciple do all the work. I don't think that, that wasn't the Christ's lifestyle. And that's where I learned that true discipleship, making a true discipleship was about the building the relationship and the fellowship with my disciples and then encouraging them growing up together. So when I outlined the Jesus Christ's, um, you know, the 
to following the God's will was the Father has been working around Jesus Christ right up until now. And then now the Father has me working and that I do nothing on my own initiative. I watch to see what the Father is doing and I do what I see the Father is doing. And the Father loves me and the Father shows me everything he does. And then that's how your life has to be. So if I sum it up, so watch to see what God is working and just join him. You know, God is working around your life, even until today, and then he will continue to work around you. He's always calling you, initiating it, and then being working with him. So a lot of times, you know, we try to do a lot of work, but if we, even when you look at the life of the Moses, amazing stories about the Moses, but a lot of things that what did Moses do? Pretty much he did nothing, right? All the work, all the miracles that happened, who did it? It's God is the one who did it all. All the simple thing that Moses did was, even though it's a ridiculous command that God has given to him, he just obeyed and followed it. You know, so that's what he did. You know, when the changing the water into the blood, he just had to put a staff into the water, that was it. He didn't change the water into the blood. It was God who did it. But we are the one who's trying to make things happen. That's why it's getting tired, you know. So it may sound very simple and easy, right? And being a true disciple is just to simply listen and submit to God and obey Him. And that is hard, in a sense, submitting yourself and obeying God. But in order that what helped me was like, um, uh, you know, like Michael Jordan, I'm sure you mon most of you know Michael Jordan. He became a most famous basketball, you know, star at one point. Um, you know, he, what I known about him was how he became a, such a great uh, basketball player. Wasn't that he was uh, working really hard to jump really high as a being as an Air Jordan, you know, he didn't, practice that. He didn't practice how to dunk. He didn't practice all kinds of tricks. But what he was trying to do was basic about what the basketball is about. Just the practicing the basic of the basketball, what is the basic. So same thing, you know, in my life as a marriage, as I going through, you know, some of you guys married and just newlywed as there too. Uh, things doesn't go as the way you planned. You know, that's how the life is, even as marriage. Sometimes when the trouble comes in your life, and how do you resolve that? You know, you know one of the ways that I resolve, um, you know, even my wife is here. Honestly, I do not like 100% what she does, everything that I love about her. But some of the things that uh, having a hard time to accepting it, hard time to uh, take it in, but every time those are hardships, how I do resolve is like, I remember my first time I met her. I remember my first love when I had with her. And that's how I remember, and then that's how I overcome uh, those troubles <laughs> or the fighting moments. I avoid those uh, through that, you know. Uh, but not the first love that you had, but just first love with your wife or husband only. Okay, so don't think about somebody else <laughs> during that moment. <laughs> so it's about the same thing. You know, when you live the life of Christian, when it's difficult, when it's hardship, remember when you had a first love with the Jesus Christ, how you became a Christ. You know, I remember when I became a Chris Christian, when I dedicated my life as a Christian, was remembering the Christ on the cross. As, a, as our Jasper kids say, nothing more. I don't need anything more. I don't need a fancy life. I don't need anything of the rewards that God has prepared for li my life. I'm sure God will, but what Christ did on that cross for my life is more than enough. When we continually remembering those moments of our lives, when you serve, when you do the things with God, not for God, with God as God is inviting you, to be a praise leader, to be as a servant in the church, to be as a dedicating your life. And that's how we became a true disciples of Christ. So 
So don't be living the life with all that and then say, Christ never knew you, but I'm praying and asking, you know, that that once you come, you know, to meet with the Christ, and the Christ will say, you faithful servant of man, come on in. And that's the word that you will hear at the end of your life. And then that's the life um, of the living the true disciples. I believe uh, this church will continue to grow as true disciples. And our Jasper kids as well, you know, it's just a thankful that our Jasper kids is like this because um, even though I'm away and our ministries continue to be able to run, is because um, they were discipled well because they know the Christ. If it was work, I'm sure it would be difficult, but they don't consider this as work, but this is part of their life. That's why ministry is running. So I believe this church will do the same. Even though Pastor John is not here, Pastor Yuan is not here, I'm sure this church will continue to run as it is because, because you are true disciples of Christ. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you so much for the opportunity for this servant to uh, share the word of God with our fellowship here. And thank you so much for this wonderful church and the body of the Christ who truly focus on to be as a true disciples. And Father, we ask of you like God, that a lot of times it is as simple as it can be, but a lot of times it's difficult as well as we take it on our own understanding. So help us, Heavenly Father, to be uh, focused on you. Help us to be depending on you. Help us to obedient unto your words and the commands that are given to us, Lord God, even though how hard it may be, or just trusting and believe in you, Lord God. And the Lord, thank you so much once again for the opportunity to share your word and then let us be encouraged and challenged and then leave the true disciples of Christ in this world so that, that they're making difference and an impact in this world until the, your son Jesus Christ comes or until the day we give our last breath on this earth. Thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have an offering song. Um, praise later. Praising you. and the sea your river runs with love for me and i will open up my heart and let the healer set me free i'm happy to be in the truth and i will daily lift my hands for i will always sing when your love came down i could sing of your love forever I can sing of your love forever. I can sing of your love forever. I can sing of your love forever. Over the mountains and the sea, your river runs with love for me. And I will open up my heart. Then let the healer send me. I'm happy to be in the truth And I will daily lift my hands For I will always sing When your love came down Cause sing of your love forever Cause sing of your love forever I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we just give all the glory, all the thanks to your Son Jesus, and we thank you for the message you've given us today through Pastor JJ.
Help us to walk by faith, not by sight. Help us always to trust in you, and help us always to focus on our first love with uh, Jesus Christ, the passion and your love. We ask you to bless the offering and bless the hands and the feet that for your kingdom's sake. Let us have a wonderful and peaceful fellowship. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Shall we all stand and sing the last song? See you high and left it up Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power, pour out your power and love As we sing holy, holy See you high, see you high and left it up Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love, pour out your power and love. As we sing, holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. I want to see. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for a tremendous love that you pour in our lives, Heavenly Father. We ask of you that all of us will uh, try to be as true disciples of the Christ, continually encouraging and strengthening each one of them as they live the life for the kingdom of God. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of our Lord and the work of the Holy Spirit to be with all the members and who continue to be living for as a disciples, true disciples of the Christ, from now and forevermore. Amen.